Good afternoon. I'd like to tell you about a case that I had just a few months ago. I'd like to introduce you to Stephen. Stephen is an extremely lucky man. He has a beautiful wife, he has two amazing kids, and he has a beautiful house on the hill. In America, we call this the American dream. But with all this good luck, Stephen also has a little bit of bad luck. He has some bad genetics. His father died of a massive MI at the age of 45. His grandfather died after three heart attacks and heart failure at the age of 55. And Stephen himself has already had a heart attack at the age of 43. And you think with all this, Stephen would make some changes in his life, but he hasn't. He works long hours at a stressful job at a law firm. He eats whatever he wants, whenever he can, and he has never once visited the fitness club that sits one floor below him. Well, all this comes to a head one day when Stephen complains of crushing chest pain and calls out to his colleagues, and by the time they arrive, he's already on the floor, minimally responsive. Paramedics are called, they're transporting him to the hospital, and with 10 minutes to go, he becomes unresponsive and loses his pulse. VTAC was on the monitor. They shocked him, and they began high-quality CPR. That CPR continues in the resuscitation bay, and someone decides that it's time for a rhythm check, and a systole is found. So someone says, we should get transthoracic ultrasound and look for reversible causes. These are the things we do. The problem is, is that his windows weren't so easy. They looked up, they looked down, they looked everywhere and they couldn't get good images. And after an hour of code, the nurse says to Stephen, the nurse says to the team, we were wasting too much time with this ultrasound. It's time to get back on the chest and do chest compressions. <laughs> this has happened to every single one of us. And that's why nurses should run codes. Well, after an hour of that arrest, unfortunately, Stephen died. There's some people in the room that said, hey, listen, we did the best that we could. It's just how it goes. There's other people in the room that secretly know that had they not spent so much time looking around with the ultrasound machine that maybe they could have done more high-quality CPR and maybe the outcomes would have been different. Well, what I'm here to tell you today is I've been a little bit insincere with you. Even though that's how some arrests typically go, and I've been involved in those as well, that's not how Stephen's code went that day. So let's pick it up where we were in the resuscitation bay. High quality CPR was being done, and a TE probe was placed while CPR was being performed. TE is just like transthoracic echo. There's crystals on the end of a flexible probe, but instead of that, plastic stick handle, it's a long, long handle that extends outside the patient. And you have these knobs that allow you to flex the probe, extend the probe, wiggle it back and forth and turn the plane of beam around so you can get some amazing images of the heart. The ultrasound probe goes behind the heart, one to two centimeters sitting behind. And as you can see here, there's no bones, there's no skin, soft tissue, lungs, doesn't matter if you're morbidly obese you get a great image every single time. This is the mid-esophageal four-chamber view of a TEE. Look how crisp and clear the image is. Again, one centimeter behind the heart without nothing in its way. You see here the left ventricle, the right ventricle, the right atrium, the left atrium. And you might say this looks very familiar to something you've seen before. This is the apical four-chamber view from transthoracic, just flipped upside down. And this makes sense because you're imaging the heart from behind instead of from the front. 
So if you already know how to look at transthoracic echo, there's no learning curve here. You already know how to look at TEE. Let me give you some examples of how it can help you. TEE can help you to rapidly identify reversible causes. My friend Jimmy Fair sent me this clip. Here a person comes in, PA arrest, and what do you see here? A dilated right ventricle, underfilled LV, massive PE. This person got intra-arrest TPA and walked out of the hospital. Another case by my friend Rob Arnfield. Again, big RV, small LV, a clot in transit. TPA administered, this person walks out of the hospital. How about this case? Return of spontaneous circulation, and it's found that the person has a raptured papillary muscle. This person went emergently to the operating theater and walked out of the hospital two weeks later. This case by Patrick Okersey, you see a and it's an type A dissection. This code was stopped after finding this. And you might say, stop, T isn't all that good. But this helped to conserve resources because this person would have never survived to the operating room. So we save time by not doing useless CPR. Now, even if you don't use it for reversible causes, TEE lets you do things better that you're already doing. We push on the chest, intra-arrest, and we think we're doing an excellent job. But when you look here with TEE, the LV is not really getting squished the way you want it to be. It's just moving side to side. So my buddy Mike Malin taught me this trick that during intra-arrest, TEE, you can guide your team to move their hands on the chest because not everyone's heart sits in the same place. He'll say, all right, move your hands down a little bit, a little bit to the left, and then you get an image that looks something like this. Goal-directed chest compressions. I ask you, which chest compressions would you rather be doing on your patients? From the outside, it all looks the same. Now, we're told to push two inches deep during CPR, push down and allow for recoil. I don't know how on earth you can measure effective chest compressions. But using TE, you actually can. If you bring an M-mode cursor down through the sternum, you can follow the sternum moving up and down during CPR. And in this case, compressions aren't being done properly. Swap out your rescuer and bring up someone else in. And what you see here is more adequate compressions. In real time, you can see that this person is receiving the appropriate amount of chest compressions. Good downward force and good recoil. You're doing things right. Now, you may find in your hospital that when you ask for TEE, someone will say, you can't do TEE. There's a potential for complications. Only anesthetists and cardiologists should be doing that. Well, to those people, I have two things to say. The first, it's hard to cause complications on a dead person. You can't make that person deader. The second thing, more importantly, is that when you look at the data, esophageal perforation, which is arguably the most worrisome complication of TEE, is only present in 0.03%. 0.03%. I want you to think about all the things you do on a daily basis that are life-saving procedures. The intubations, the central lines, chest tubes, the complications from those are far higher than 0.03%, yet we do those things daily without any hesitation. Let's get back to Stephen. Remember, transesophageal probe is placed into arrest, we're monitoring chest compressions, and then it came time for a rhythm check. We thought we saw asystole, but the ultrasound probe showed something different. Fine ventricular fibrillation to everyone's surprise. And he was shocked, as were we. And he got return of spontaneous circulation. Stephen got admitted to the CCU, and he walked out of the hospital after coronary artery bypass surgery in two weeks, and he's back with his family. TEE is a game changer when it comes to resuscitation. It allows you to find reversible causes quickly with minimal interruption for chest compressions, and it also allows you to do the things that you're already doing much, much better. I'm fairly confident that Stephen wouldn't be back with his family if we didn't use TEE that day. 
So I encourage you, if you do CPR and you believe ultrasound is helpful for your resuscitation, I encourage you to look more into TEE and use it in your resuscitations. Thank you.